Good morning, beloveds. We are about to end June. The year will officially be halfway over tomorrow. It's a little weird. Okay, so which means it is June 31st. June 31st. It's June 30th. <laughs> There's only 30 days in June. I don't know what's with me today. Um, okay, because if you can see, that's July 1st. All right. So it is June 30th. Our title is A Wonderful Awareness. Our first quote is, For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I have seen the face of God. And that is Genesis thirty-three ten. The second quote is, The only way God can evolve a spontaneous individual, individual is to let them alone, allow them to awaken to themselves. And that is the Science of Mind 109. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, one of the most fascinating stories in the Old Testament is that of Jacob, who steals his older twin's birthright, prepares conspires with his mother to deceive his aged father, has an amazing dream of angels ascending and descending a ladder from heaven, engages in a wrestling match with a messenger of God, and finally has an emotional reconciliation with his brother. In his book, The Hidden Mystery of the Bible, Jack Addington writes the story as an allegory, suggesting that the entire narrative represents various levels of evolving consciousness of Jacob which leads ultimately to his realization of what we call the Christ consciousness. Dr. Addington writes, it is natural for each one of us to consider himself, consider themselves first as a human, depending upon human resources. The awkward, the awakened intellect supplies this limited viewpoint and teaches us how to use the law of cause and effect. It is the stepping stone to the Christ consciousness. In every life, there are trying times when we appear to be in a struggle with some part of ourselves. But as a wise person has said, every problem comes with, the, with a gift in its hand. The length of the struggle depends upon us. We can give it up whenever we want and learn from the experience. This might mean that we surrender our pride, our materialistic thinking, our need to be right, and it can also mean that we turn our attention to God, to trust in God's perfect right action. Then we can know there is complete harmony in the various parts of our nature, body, mind, and spirit. We can know that the physical aspect of us, along with along with the intellectual process, can serve as the instruments of good and in the loving consciousness of the indwelling Christ, we can rejoice and see the face of God all around us. I know that God is at work within me. I am blessed in body, mind, and spirit. I am thankful for the wonderful awareness of Christ, which allows the perfect unenfoldment in my life. And that is J.A., which I believe is Jean Anderson. Yes, Gene Anderson. Um, and honestly, I don't have a whole lot to add to that. It's interesting. Um, I've not thought about that story uh, of Jacob in years, although, <laughs> interestingly enough, somebody mentioned it recently um, about Jacob struggling uh, with the angel for, uh, you know, for a day and a night. <clears throat> you know, so maybe I need to do something with that story. And maybe not, you know, what's mine to do. Um, but it, it does go back to uh, the Christ consciousness and the fact that the physical body that we wear, while it is not who we are, it is not what we are, it has a purpose. Um, and so when we can reconcile and coordinate, I'm going to use the word coordinate, the body, mind, and soul, then we literally can be channels for good in the world. Uh, amazing things can happen when we don't hate parts of ourselves, when we don't hate our physical body, when we don't, you know, because that's a big thing. I mean, especially as a woman, you know, I got all of these clarions screaming at me, you know, advertisers and what have you going 
if if only you look like this, then you would be perfect. And I was like, well, I'm never going to look like that. It's not possible for me to look like that. It's literally not physically possible for me to look like that. And I'm not going to waste time, money, effort, and, you know, my, my attention to look like that because it won't solve all my problems. If I want to solve all my problems, the best thing I can do is love all of the parts of myself, including the physical part of myself. You know, is it, is it perfect? Well, yes, because it's complete. Is it flawless? No. You know, some mornings I get up and my knees absolutely refuse to deal with the day. And then I just have to make the best I can. Um, uh, the best of it that I can. So, but hating it is not going to do me any good. You know, hating my body doesn't do me any good. But loving my body... And then allowing it to combine with my my mind and my spirit allows me, even with the physical limitations, to be this amazing force for good in the world. And maybe that's what uh, Gene Anderson and Jack Higgins, Addington, Addington, are after in this in this thing. Is like, you know. Love all the parts of yourself, accept all of the parts of yourself and understand that for this particular period of time, you know, it's all of you. And when you cooperate with all of you and go to the place of plug into you know, that Christ consciousness, you know, access that's Christ conscious, then you become an amazing force for good in this world. And you don't have to do anything other then be who you are. Maybe I did have something to say about this. All right. So a wonderful awareness. Um, and therefore I've seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. Genesis 33, 10, go look it up. I have no idea. I get why, why it's in this reading. It's because the idea is the once we accept that looking in the mirror, that's God looking back at us. Then we can look in any face and see God looking back at us. Um, the only way God can evolve a spontaneous individual is to let them alone and l allow them to awaken to themselves. That's called free will, people. <laughs> That's why we can make mistakes. So um, that's from the Science of Mind text, page 109. So uh, one of the most fascinating stories, she thinks, in the Old Testament is the one of Jacob, who steals his older brother's birthright, conspires with his mother to deceive his aged father, has an amazing dream of angels ascending and descending a ladder from heaven, engages in a wrestling match with a messenger of God. That's the part that somebody else mentioned recently, like within the last 24 hours. So it's interesting. Um, and finally has an emotional reconciliation with his brother, um, which I don't remember. So I'm gonna have to go look that up. In his book, The Hidden Mystery of the Bible, which sounds interesting, um, Jack Addington writes the story as an allegory, suggesting that the entire narrative represents the various levels of evolving consciousness of Jacob, which led ultimately to his realization of what we call Christ consciousness. Dr. Addington writes, it is natural for each one of us to consider himself at first as a human, depending on human resources. Because it's what we're taught. It is what we are taught. Um, then the awakened intellect surplants this limited viewpoint and teaches us how to use the law and cause and effect. It is the stepping stone into Christ consciousness. The law operates for us all the time, whether we know we're using it or not. Once we learn about the law and learn how to use it efficiently, it works a whole lot better for us because we know what we're doing. Um, we get what we ask for instead of getting what we think we want. Uh, in every life, there are trying times when we appear to be in a struggle with some parts of ourselves. Oh yeah, been there, done that. But as a wise person said, every problem comes with a gift in its hand. The length of, and the length of the struggle depends upon us. There is a time that we can look at the struggle that we are having within ourselves and go, you know what? Mm, there's a better way to do this. And one of them is to start with the, the, the idea of loving ourselves. All of ourselves. All of the parts, even the parts that we don't always like. Um, just a couple of days ago, I was talking about that ugly part of my personality. Okay, you know what? 
I can still use that part of my personality and I can still use it as a channel for good. So I get to love every part of myself. Um, we can give it up whenever we want and learn from the experience. And sometimes that's just it. Sometimes we have to look at an experience and go, you know what? I'm done. I've got it. I understand the lesson that you are trying to teach me here. Let's move on. You know, look it in the face and call it what it is and call it done. This might mean that we surrender our pride, our materialistic thinking, our need to be right. And it can also mean that we turn our attention to God, to trust in God's perfect right action. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm talking to one of those people who just need to be right, there is a particular sound that I make. And what it means is, you know what? I'd rather have peace than be right. If you want to be wrong, then I'm going to let you because it's not worth my peace to continue to argue with you. And a bunch of people around me have figured out what that sound is. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm done. I'm not engaging with you anymore. Um, my work life is interesting is all I will tell you. Um, <clears throat> then we can know there is complete harmony in the various parts of our nature, body, mind, and spirit. We can know that the physical aspect of us, along with the intellectual process, can serve as instruments of good. We have the ability the will, and I, free, I, I honestly believe the desire to be channels of good. It's that free will thing that gets in our way, and sometimes we make messy uses of it. And in the loving consciousness of the indwelling Christ, we can rejoice and see the face of God all around us. And then we have this beautiful little treatment. I know that God is at work within me. I am blessed in body, mind, and spirit. I am thankful for the wonderful awareness of the Christ, which allows the perfect unenfoldment in my life. You gotta love Ernest making up words. I don't think unenfoldment is a word, but it is a word for Ernest, and we all use it. So, all right, so the mission today, should we choose to accept it? And frank, frankly, there's a whole lot in here. Um... But I think that I'm going to use this one. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to look for what it is that we might surrender. Okay? At this particular point in time, you may not have anything you want to surrender. But you might as you might also. It never hurts to take inventory, to do the, you know, to take the inventory and go, you know what? I think I can let that go for a little while. So that's the mission today. Should we choose to accept it? The other missions, the same mission I give you every day, which is to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever it looks like, doesn't matter, big, small, what have you. Three deep breaths is my watchword right now. <laughs> but it includes taking a nap. It includes taking a walk. It includes taking the day off. It includes enjoying something, fully engaging in something. I think we don't, we get so busy, we forget to enjoy, we forget to enjoy life. So that's part of it. All right. Um, I'm going to encourage you, as I always do, to do, uh, to engage your mind and your body, to drink plenty of water. The high is only supposed to be 86 today. I don't know what we're going to do with ourselves. Um, but it is what it is. Hey, let's, Pray for rain. Um, although we want the rain to not be crazy tomorrow because I'm hearing stories and I'm like, I haven't been watching the news. Um, and um, in, get that early in your day light, reset those hormones. And I'll, as always, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. It is a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. And when we unite the parts of ourselves and access that Christ consciousness, then we understand where heaven is, where it is found, which is right here. So 
It means we can access it anytime. Take Emma's advice. Look for the good and praise it. And right now, I'm ad I'm advocating looking for those small goods. Um, because it's a, it, the world's a little crazy right now, and sometimes looking for the big goods are too hard. So look for the little ones; they will add up. All right. Um, <clears throat> catch us on the social medias, Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I am the Reading Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. <laughs> All right. And then, um, if you want to know what's going on, email info at creativelife.org. That'll get you to, uh, our constant content link, which will take you everywhere, including our website. And there'll be links to all the social medias. I believe in it. Um, and have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanting day, a rainy day for crossing our fingers for, um, a cooler day in the midst of the summer. Um, an end of June day. The year is half done. A good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always and forever. All right. So take care of yourself. Know that Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, provided we haven't all been washed away in the storms. Like I said, I've been watching the news. I just heard about it on the board meeting last night and went, wait, what? Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, know that you're loved always. I'll see you next time.